What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. Today, we're going to talk about speed control firmware updates. Uh, I've got a speed control from the XC Run lineup, and I've got a speed control from the EZ Run Max lineup that we're going to walk through some basic firmware updates with. You can use your LCD Program Box Pro with the built in Bluetooth compatibility and the HW Link V2 app, or if you have an OTA, that will work as well. The speed control has to be compatible with the Bluetooth features. So, some of the speed controls, like the Quick Run G2 series, they'll work with the LCD Program Box Pro, but they don't support the Bluetooth functionality. So if you've never connected your box to your speed control before for tuning or whatever, just know it doesn't go through the receiver harness. You're going to always plug into the programming port on the speed control. There's either a fan port that shares with the programming or there's a dedicated programming port like we have here. And there's marks on the case to let you know the orientation of the wire. Same is true. You get the double-ended harness with the LCD box and it goes on the side that says speed control and there are orientation marks so you know how to plug that in correctly. If you're going to do any updates, make sure that your phone, the operating system itself, is updated as well. If your phone gets too far out of date or even it's one or two versions off, the app is always made for the newest version. So make sure that your uh, phone's operating system is up to date and your app itself is up to date. To check that, you go into settings in the app, then you go to about, and you can see your app version here. At the time right now, it's 2.17. This is on an iPhone, and the database version is 2024. 40724. The App version varies a little bit from iPhone to Android. We have that posted on the website. There's a link in the description down below so you can check. Uh, the other topic is that the Bluetooth modules themselves have updates available for the firmware that's on there. And there's a database version for the LCD uh, in internal as well. Uh, there's another video that we covered all that. There's a link in the description down below for that. So I've got the speed control plugged into a battery pack. We're going to power this guy on. Screen comes on. Give it a second, and then you tap on the link icon. Oh, tap on the link icon up there. I have already renamed mine to CSLC Pro, so I connect to there. If this is the first time you ever connected, the default password is all eights. It says it right on the screen. And then to get into the speed control to do the update, you're going to go to firmware. So here you see it tells you the speed control, the version, the current firmware version that's on there, and then what you have available. Now on this particular one, this is a stock spec. Uh, there's a boost firmware and there's a non-boost firmware so if you're racing blinky clash you're going to use this non-boost one uh, and then you hit firmware update and it tells you to ensure safety please remove the propellers or the wheels and ensure that the bluetooth is always in operation before the update never lock the screen or switch to other applications during the update process to keep the mobile phone within 1.5 meters from your speed control and you say okay and it goes through the process. So this takes a little bit of time, and while it's doing that, we'll talk about a couple other pro tips. Uh, one thing I always like to do is make sure that my phone is in airplane mode. That way I don't get a call, none of the apps in the background try to do anything and interrupt this process. Because if the speed control gets interrupted during the update, it can brick it, and you might not be able to bring it back. If you do ever run into a situation where that does happen to you, sometimes it'll just fire up and you can do it again and it'll re-update. Other times you'll need to use the USB link program in a Windows computer to try to force it that way. And even then, it's not necessarily always going to work. Um, it just kind of depends on that. So it's real... I don't want to say ultra, ultra important. I haven't done it to one of my speed controls in the time that I've been updating speed controls, but I have had folks tell me that it happens. The folks that kind of told me the whole story some of them said they had a call some of them said they walked away others said that they didn't do anything so it's hard to say exactly what happened so there you go oh updates completed uh we hit confirm and that's all there is to that after an update the speed control will disconnect and it's basically reset itself so a lot of times your profile will be reset and you'll have to recalibrate the speed control so make sure you double check all that before you do a firmware update treat a firmware update is pretty serious business so that's a quick walkthrough of the firmware update uh we'll do the max 10 next so connection on this guy still going to remain the same here it's pretty much the same for all of them and then there's a again a programming port on the top that the orientation is marked plug that guy in there i have a battery pack plugged in here power on the speed control screen comes on hit the link that's my device right there i already have the password in there if you don't like i said before it's all eights uh and then we go to firmware update and right here you do see the model that it is the hardware version of the speed control the current firmware that's on there and that there is actually an update available for this one so you go ahead uh, you can double check you can see if there's anything else there but usually it's just the latest one you hit update gives you that same warning and this basically means don't turn anything off don't do anything wrong we hit firmware update or we hit confirm sorry 
and away it goes. So this is a Max 10 G2 80 amp. This was installed, I believe, in my two-wheel drive slash for a while. Uh, super popular speed control. We do the 80 amp and the 140 amp, both on the same size uh, platform package, if you will. The only difference is that the the, eight, the 140 amp goes, I think, up to 4S, and it does more a wider range of motors as well. But other than that, they look from the outside the same, other than it says 80 amp on the side. Updates with the newer generations do go relatively quickly. They used to take several minutes. Uh, now it only takes about a minute and a half or so in most setups. So it's almost done here. And I believe the update for this one was to improve some of the low speed stuff. This is one of the original release uh, Max 10s that was out there. So I'm surprised that this one hadn't been updated already. And once you jump out of there, again, resets the whole setup and you got to reconnect if you want to jump in there and check stuff. So. so if you do do an update, don't forget you might have to reset your settings or just double check them at least. Look in your parameters before you start the update and then double check them after you to see if anything changed. And then also make sure that you redo the speed controls calibration to the radio system as well. Don't forget, we have a podcast. It's called RC Stuff Powered by Hybwing. You can find it on your favorite podcast service. We give away free RC stuff each and every episode. All you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. Again, that's RC stuff powered by Hobbywing. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. And as always, folks, thanks for watching another episode of The Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time. <laughs>